Number 27. The following nuclei do not lie in the band of stability. How would they be expected to decay? And then we have good old phosphorus. So in this example, we know that this type of phosphorus, this nucleide of phosphorus, does not lie in the band of stability. Therefore, it is classified as being an unstable nucleide, and even more so, it's going to be radioactive. So, always unstable material want to become stable. They will decay, and, you know, they will decay in order to become a more stable version of themselves. We always want to be a better version of ourselves, right? So, same thing with nucleides. Now, in this case, we have to figure out what's going on, whether we're going to be undergoing beta emission, right, or positron emission, B plus or beta plus is a positron, electron capture, or alpha emission. Now, the first thing is always look at that atomic number. If you have an atomic number that's greater than 83, more chances than not, uh, the nucleide will undergo alpha emission. But we have an atomic number of 15. So no worries about that. We've automatically eliminated the alpha emission. But now there's stuff that's called, you know, the NP ratio. Whether you have a high NP ratio, you'll undergo beta emission. Whether you have a low NP ratio, you'll either go pro uh, positron emission or electron capture. Now, the full-blown thing is actually finding out the ratio and in this case, you would have to find out the total number of neutrons, which is the N, and the total of number of protons. But who's got time for that, right? There's an easier method to this. Now, generally speaking, if you do have a high N to P ratio, that correlates with high mass numbers. So high goes with high. High N to P uh, ratios, high mass numbers. On the flip side, if you have a low N to P ratio, low neutron to proton ratio, you have relatively low mass number. So first off, find the mass number that they gave you. And the mass number is always going to be the higher number, the larger number of the two values. It's going to be in the upper left-hand corner. So we have a mass number of 28. But now the question is, how am I going to know whether 28 is considered a low mass number or a high mass number? Enter in our favorite piece of information from the chemistry course. <laughs> our friend, the periodic table. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Okay. This is not the price is right. You are the next contestant on the periodic table. Phosphorus, P. Now, on the periodic table, they do give you average masses, right? It's always decimal values. They crunch all the numbers together, and they spit out an average atomic mass of all the phosphorus, basically, in the Earth. Now, on my periodic table, the mass number that they gave me is a 30.97. Round this to the nearest whole number. 30.97 is very close to 31. That whole number is telling you that the most abundant source of phosphorus is phosphorus 31. And if it's the most abundant, that means it's got to be the most stable. But now, our nucleide has a mass number of 28. Phosphorus generally wants to be 31. So now I can put it into perspective that this 28 is a low mass number. Ha ha! And low mass numbers, low N to P ratios, are going to become stable by either putting out a positron into the world or an electron capture, meaning they're going to take an electron. Now, knowing the difference between these two and which one is, you know, which one this one's actually going to go for, you can't really determine that. This really depends on the activation energy, whichever one has a lower activation energy, that's what the nucleide is going to do. So you could either say positron emission or electron capture. Um, I just love to use the emission ones. So I'm just going to say that, hey, this could possibly undergo positron emission and call it, call it a day. But 
you know, if electron capture, maybe, maybe this was a multiple choice for you, you know, I don't know, right? If this was a multiple choice and they didn't have the positron emission answer and they had electron capture, you would choose that one. Just kind of showing you, you know, the difference, but either one is good, but that's it. I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. I look forward to helping you in more questions. we got tons of stuff coming out this new school year. This is the best time of year. Starting school, so much possibilities, right? You're motivated. You're determined. You're going to ace those, those finals at the end of the year. And I believe in you guys, right? So keep studying hard, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.